All right, everybody. Hey, welcome. <laughs> welcome to our November 3rd US REI Investor Network meeting. Glad to have each and every one of you there. Sorry about a little bit of error there on uh, getting started here with a microphone. Was working earlier, fine, but you, you know technology. Uh, it is a nice, cool day here. Some chilly weather, wet and rainy here in Austin, Texas. Hopefully, it's nice and warm wherever you guys are located across the country. Now, we've got people from the East Coast, the West Coast join us tonight. Uh, it's great to see some familiar faces. It's great to see some new people on here as well. Uh, always great to see you guys on there. Davin, Catherine, Barica, great to see you. Linda, uh, Jim, Lanny Harrington, join us. Good to see you, buddy. RJ, Santiago, New York City. Got a lot of great people join us here tonight, and so we'll dive into the information. So, um, yeah, if this is your first time, we're glad to have you. Check out the website, usreinetwork.com. We've got all the replays, the past uh, sessions embedded on the website. You know, um, glad to have you. We encourage you uh, to comment, to share across the different places. And we want to thank you for being here, taking time on your schedule, whether you're watching this live or watching the replay afterwards. And our focus philosophy is focus on providing space for investors to find and promote deals, raise capital, and grow as investors, whether it's through networking with other investors, learning some new content from one of our experts, or working with our different vendors out there. We ask you one main thing, treat everyone with respect, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're here to help you provide resources across the country. So if you have an issue, have a deal you're working on, don't hesitate to speak up. Hey, I need some help with this or need some help with that. All right. Um, each week we do feature usually a different vendor and a subject matter expert. Our vendor was going to come on tonight. Unfortunately, I had to back out just a few minutes ago, uh, but we'll have him on next. Actually, um, the following week, we will not have a meeting for November 10th. I will be traveling uh, that day. So we won't have one next Wednesday night. Uh, we will have the one the following Wednesday, and then we'll be off prior to, it's hard to believe, Thanksgiving is just around the corner. Uh, <laughs> and then we'll have two meetings just in December, the first two weeks of December, then we'll take the rest of the uh, rest of December off for you guys. But anyway, a little about me, if you guys don't know who I am, I've uh, been a real estate investor for over 20 years, hard to believe 20 years flies by. I guess it does when you're having fun. I'm the CEO of WeCloseNotes.com. It's been around since uh, for a while now, buying primarily distressed debt on residential commercial properties. I'm the host of the uh, podcast. It's a nationally syndicated podcast, the Note Closure Show, Note Camp, and Note Night in America. Um, we do a Monday webinar every Monday night. Still doing that. Been doing that for 11 years. I'm specifically focused on note investing. 2014, I was a Note Educator of the Year by Noteworthy USA. And in 2018, I was Investor of the Year finalist with Think Realty. And you know, I was just named a number four entrepreneur to watch in the next 12 months by U.S. Reporter uh, Magazine as well. So it's pretty excited about that. But anyway, we are here to help you. We And we need your help. Help me help you. All right. You know, and feel free to invite others. If you got friends, family members, coworkers looking to get started as a real estate investor, as we all know, the fourth quarter, especially when we get to the end of the year, especially... The first year, people are looking at their goals, their, uh, you know, <laughs> their annual you know, focus that they're trying to get around and you know, change. And I don't like to say um, resolutions, New Year's resolutions, because that doesn't work. Because you could start a new goal or, or new focus a, any day, but invite others. And really, I really, really harp it on this. Please share your haves and wants live. If you got to do your work on, you're looking for specific deals in a particular area, feel free to bring them up. During halves and months, and we'll call on you. If you're willing to come on and say who you are, you've got a microphone on your computer and say, Hey, this is what I'm focused on. This is what I'm looking for. We're glad to, to, to call on you. Uh, but we also encourage you to network others. We just put two investors just uh, a few minutes ago one out in Pennsylvania, one in uh, uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan on a deal, uh, and help them find an insurance company for a home and finding a local investor or realtor to take them down. So we're here to help you out. And please share your deals that you have, that you own or have under contract. If it's not something you don't have under contract, please don't share because you don't really control it. We're not looking for people that are supposedly brokers of brokers of brokers of money. If you've got some money you're looking to put the work, hey, feel free to raise your hand. Be glad to talk with you about that. Uh, and then also feel free in the chat, in the Zoom chat role, if you're watching us here live or also on YouTube, you can put your LinkedIn URL or your, your, your LinkedIn profile URL in the chat role or in the message so that others can connect with you as well. That's what we want. Uh, but we've also got the, besides the US REI network website, we've also got the different groups out there available on meetup.com, Facebook, we have a group, and then LinkedIn group. If it's just search in the groups, 
like it says, usreinetwork.com. It's here to help you out there. If you need help, just go to the website and scroll down a little bit and click on the logos. <laughs> All right. And uh, one of the things that we do, we, we do record these and we do send these out the next day. So these should be rolling out within 24 hours. We usually will do a, a real live stream or we'll email you a link with a replay. We are hit, we do have the record button rock and rolling for you. But anyway, um, kind of a bit of a lineup here. We got three introductions and expectations. We always will then dive into the haves and wants. Three, we'll get into featured deal of the week if there is one. I guess if you got a deal you're looking for, feel free to reach out to us. Four, we'll talk about a vendor spotlight. And then five, we'll do, uh, do a big deep dive into the subject matter expert. Tonight, you've got me as the subject matter expert. Um, we're supposed to have uh, William Tingle talk about subject twos, but unfortunately, he had a uh, uh, death in the family, had to reschedule for a later date. But anyway, and then if we've got time, we'll leave it open for some more online networking after the main session. But, uh, you know, we, I'd love for you guys to share in the chat role, type in the chat role there, uh, and make sure your chat is set to everyone, not to just uh, hosts and panelists, but to everyone um, of, you know, who you are, where you're from, and kind of what your focus is. And uh, love to have you guys share, because I know we've got Jim Myers out of Wake Forest, North Carolina. Lanning Harrington is out of uh, South Carolina. We've got uh, Catherine Bell um, out of, uh, sorry, Scottsdale, Arizona. Linda Martin out of California. Uh, don't know who that is. Sorry about that. RJ Santiago out of New York City. And we've got uh, Tony Miller out of Miami. Love for you guys. Anyone want to come on and introduce themselves and tell us a little about your, your business and what you're focused on as a real estate investor? I see that Jim Meyer says he's dealing with a new printer and it's, the install is not going. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I pray for you, Jim. That's never a fun thing and having to deal with that. Uh, like I said, if you got a deal or a flip or sell or something we're going to look funny to provide, feel free to share. Must have your own contract. If you're looking for a deal or a vendor or funding, please feel free to reach out. If you're needing specific, share your deal specifics ahead of time. We'll be glad to share them out there. But like I said, type in your information in the chat roll. Uh, please use the groups out there, guys and gals out there as well. So treat others with a golden rule. You just want to be treat others as you would like to be treated as well. So let's see who else is on there. If there's nobody's going to jump on here and say, hey, I want to jump on and say, sure, we'll move on then. We'll move on then tonight so you guys can get rock and rolling back to your thing. So feature deal, though, we, we talked about this last week a little bit. I want to bring it back up. Um, uh, oh, wait, Catherine says she's got a deal. All right. So let me bring Catherine on there. She's got a deal as well. Let me bring her on and allow her to talk. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, there it is, Catherine. A lot of talk. There she is, Miss Catherine Bell. You can unmute yourself. How are you doing tonight? How's the weather in Scottsdale tonight? It is gorgeous. This is the best time of the year to be here. <laughs> yeah, you got big, you got what, like 30 degree temperature swings or just perfect? They're, they're perfect. We're sitting around the 70s consistently throughout the day and night. It's amazing. Very nice. Very nice. Well, You've got a deal. Let's talk about your deal of the week. What's what's the deal that you're working on right now? So we have the uh, Miami condo. Uh, it's an REO that we are looking to sell. So the um, it's actually the TV show Dexter was filmed in the uh, uh, the lobby of this um, uh, the lobby of the where the condo is the tower, and um, so the property value is. 250 to 278,000. Uh, we recently had um, a BPO done on it. And so we're looking to sell it for um, about $160,000. So it's a one bedroom, one and a half bath, 860 square feet. It's in a really desirable area uh, in this building um, in Miami. So if you're interested, for sure, reach out to me. It's got water views, uh, pool, hot tub. I think boat slip is what well. overlooks Biscayne Bay, doesn't it? Yeah. Not a bad day. Pretty awesome. <laughs> it is pretty awesome looking uh, thing there. Clean, doesn't need any work to. That's a big thing too, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's, I, I'm very familiar with this aspect. I also wanted to throw a little uh, congratulations back at you. You guys have been doing some mailing out to IRA investors as well too that 
that have funded deals or bought bought a property with their IRA locally or funded a deal, right? Yeah, and more and more, we're getting more uh, investors set up with their IRAs so that they can um, do more investing, uh, you know, with everything we're doing. Because as you know, we've got a bunch of commercial projects that we're doing with some really great ROIs on those as well. Um, if anybody's interested in learning about adding commas to their bank accounts that way passively, uh, we have those going on as well. So just just a, a, an extraordinary um, amount of uh, an ROI on our um, coaching with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that you didn't have to say that, but I know that you guys, part of what makes you guys so successful is that you are coachable and that you take action and are going out and doing th some things and, and really leveraging. You're, you, you're a master delegator, but you're also a master of, of getting rid of stuff that causes you to drift or uh, you, you kill shiny object syndromes, I think is a great way to talk about it, huh, Catherine? That's that, yeah, I, I didn't think of it like that, but yeah, you're right. I absolutely um, kill off anything that isn't bringing in commas and adding commas to ours and our investors' bank accounts. To me, it's, I tell the team, do the numbers and the numbers tell you what to do. So it's now, all about the numbers. Let me ask you a question. With some of the marketing you're doing, um, how, 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 how much, I mean, I know that you're getting people getting set up with their IRAs and besides the, the gentleman, how much in private capital have you kind of raised in the last couple of weeks? Uh, 300,000. Very, very yeah. nice. We, we, you know, spent a few nights creating the letters and stuffing them and all of that and then mailed them out. And all of a sudden I just started getting calls, which is pretty awesome. So, yeah. Nice. Good very stuff. Exciting. Good stuff. Well, keep up the good work. All righty. Thank you. It's awesome. Thank you. Yep. Awesome. Glad to have you here. All right. Tony Miller, uh, are you able to introduce yourself? You want to come on talk or are you just going to uh, jump on and uh, type in your information? Because he says, I, I do litigation support in Florida and several other jurisdictions, have existing extensive experience supporting prosecution or defense of foreclose and other civil commercial litigation. I do complex litigation support and arrange um, litigation funding for commercial and business torts. Also know my way around using offshore financial centers, not currently a member of any bar situation. I also support SEC transactional managers. All right, good. Tony, thanks for sharing, bud. All right, let's uh, let's move on to the next thing here. Since uh, we do have, uh, we are currently working on uh, a variety of some non-performing notes. Um, we've got uh, these were roughly about ninety different assets in you know Minnesota, Chicago. Um, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, a couple in Rhode Island, a couple in Maine. We did get counters back on some stuff that we made submitted as well. We're waiting for more. Uh, we're in, in the pending phase on about 30 others that we're waiting to come back in either have an answer on Friday or Monday. So stay tuned for that. We'll share some of that stuff as we get rocking and rolling. But Lanny Harrington, the deal that Catherine was talking about might be an ideal deal for you. I know you guys are looking for stuff there in Florida. That might be a great deal. So, uh, I'll make sure and put an email together between the two of you guys out there. Um, perfect. And we'll go from there. Let's move it on. So if you'd like to have a deal featured in our US REI network, doesn't matter where it's located. You got to realize, ladies and gentlemen, our network is just not here live. It's also across the thousands of views we see on YouTube, our radio station network, which we uh, we're averaging – uh, golly, close to 3 million listeners every month on that across 17 radio stations. And then, of course, our email blast that goes out to a large database. It's here to help you guys really. There's no cost for it for us to help you market that stuff. Email me the deal specifics, the photo story. We're glad to bring you on here and talk about the deal. We'll put the slides together so you don't have to do anything. You just got to know your numbers and know the address and what's going on with it that we can uh, we can help you share your story. So feel free to schedule a call with me at talkwithscottcarson.com. That will direct you directly into my calendar and we can uh, book a 30 minute phone call, talk about your deal or shoot the breeze, whatever you like to do. So, and that's open to anybody out there too. If you want to talk real estate or uh, are struggling with something or need some help with something, hey, feel free, make sure you register at talkwithscottcarson.com. Always glad to talk with investors. Always glad to give you 30 minutes and see if we can help assist you and uh, help you make um, you know, a high return on your time and your money. Um, did want to make a big, big last week. We had a great turnout with Merrill Chandler talking about his get fundable boot camp. Ladies and gentlemen, the class is taking place this 
Friday, Saturday. It is an amazing class. I say that as being a student of Merrill. Merrill's, I, I consider Merrill one of my mentors. Learned so much from his, from his two-day class on Friday and Saturday. Uh, Friday blows you away. Literally, I mean, both days will blow you away, but Friday is eye-opening and helping us clean up our credit profile, not our credit history, but clean up our credit profile. I found out like in, in literally the first like 30 minutes, I had 29 locations showing up on my credit and that was negatively impacting my scores. And we've, we've cleaned that up. That's clean stuff up along with other things. So we've used him uh, to help us boost our, our scores and to help us get better finance, not only on autos, but credit cards, lines of credits, and then also on our house when we refinance earlier this year. So it's well worth it. You go to getfundablebootcamp.com. That's getfundablebootcamp.com. It will be the best $97 you ever spend. I will tell you that. I don't usually say that. It's the best $97 that you could spend. If you're unhappy, you can cancel, get your money back on day one. Uh, but it's definitely worth the two-day commitment. It's well, well worth it. But for little as 97 bucks, you guys can really learn about about your future any questions comments concerns before we get rock and rolling into the main subject matter tonight anybody else do, anybody else dealing with something they want to talk about or hey having difficulty with something or needing something before we move on all right well my neighbor can wait <laughs> you heard that bell it's the neighbor anyway let's get into real estate investing 101 because we've gotten so many questions over the last couple of days Actually, the last week and a half from people that are new to real estate investing, they're like, I want to get started, but I'm scared. I don't know where to begin. I don't know what to focus on. And so we thought, let's just bring up and start kind of share what you would do. If I were starting all over again as a real estate investor, what would I focus on knowing what I know now? And that's kind of where I want to go with this tonight for you all. Uh, and I, I first want to cover the four myths. There are four myths about becoming a real estate investor that you just got to realize, uh, you know, they're not true. And everybody thinks these are true. They're not. These four myths haunt all of us. I think all of us have it at some point. That you have to take this. And then sometimes it's hard to get past these myths. You know, the first myth being you don't need your own money to invest. That's the thing that most people struggle with right off the bat. I don't have my own money. I don't have money in the bank or retirement. I can't become a real estate investor. And we all know that's not true. You can use other people's money to invest. Second, uh, oh, I got to have good credit to invest. I got it, you know, I screwed up when I was in college. I had a, uh, you know, calling card that went up, right? You know, I, I signed up for all these t shirts and lines of credit that I completely screwed up on because I bought bar tabs. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> Trust me, we've all been there, done that. Thank God they don't allow credit card companies on uh, college campuses anymore. The next thing is you don't need to invest in just your backyard. You know, I live in Austin, Texas. I haven't bought anything here in Austin, Texas in over a decade because it just makes sense for me to buy other places. And a lot of people struggle with that. Oh, I'm in California. I can't find anything in California. Oh, I can't find anything in Washington, D.C. You have to realize, ladies and gentlemen, there's a little thing called the Internet and Google that helps you invest outside of your backyard. There's so many ways to delegate and make things happen besides just what's in, you know, in your, in your 30 minute radius. Uh, here's also the thing. You don't have to have a ton of money to market. People look at and they talk to investors and they see people dropping thousands of dollars each month in postcards or direct mail. I mean, like my buddy Jason Bible out of Houston, Mr. Texas Real Estate, he drops close to $20,000 a month in marketing costs. That's ridiculous. I look at it, it's a quarter million dollars a year just on direct mail. And that's his target. It's what he does. But I'm like, I don't spend near that. And we find a lot more deals on it. So it all comes down to being effective in your niche, you know that you don't have to have a lot of money to market. There's a lot of great things and welcome to the 21st century when it comes to marketing. Now we'll talk about a variety of things. We're not going to dive into specifically one niche tonight. We're talking more in a little bit of theory and some of the things that you need to focus on if you're brand new. So that's what it's about. But those are four big myths we hear. And I'm constantly answering those questions from people. I had a conversation with a guy today was kind of funny. He was like, talk about trying to put a software package together. And he was all over the place. I come back and say, hey, have you uh, have you ever invested? Do you have any invest? He goes, oh, no. I said, well, why are you trying to put together a software package if you've, uh, if you've never, you know, never, never, ever <laughs> took taken a class about a piece of real estate? That's like you trying to design a bicycle but never riding a bike. It's almost impossible. You know what I mean? And it's a lot of wasted time. But anyway, 
Here's the first thing you got to look at. If you're going to be a real estate investor, are you going to be an active investor or a passive investor? Now, what does that mean? Now, a passive investor is somebody who really is investing in others' projects. You're not going out and finding deals for, your most, for the most part. And you're primarily using your own funds and getting a flat rate of return. Okay. Um, you know, you got to realize that, yeah, if you've got a little bit of money or you've really swamped with time, we know plenty of passive investors. They're just you know, they're making six to 12% return on their money. They're happy with that. They work in too much. They don't have a lot of time. It's more of a hobby. It's kind of like investing in a fund and stuff like that. It's totally fine. Now, active investors, you're going to be investing with either your own money or OPM. That's other people's money into either projects that you manage or work out. You're active. You're finding the deals. You're working them out. You're maybe not using your own funds, but other people's money is to take things. Or if you are using your own funds, that's fine too. But you're an active investor. You're actively marketing for deals. You're looking for next deals. And that's really kind of the aspect. Now, an active investor can be somebody that's working part-time at this or full-time. It's completely notable. I know plenty of active investors that still have a full-time J-O-B. And that's fine. Okay. Um, uh, I don't know. Okay. Anyway. Um, you know, the thing you have to look at too, the next question would be active or passive. How many hours a week can you dedicate to your investing? That will often determine if you're active or passive. Now, if you're, you know, if you got an hour a night and a couple hours on the weekend, and you're fine with that. Hey, great. 10 to 15 hours, you can be active, very active. If you only got a few hours a month, then you're probably more better passive. Now, if you don't have any money, hey, you've got to start putting some money away or start doing some things in your spare time. So, that's the big thing is when I talk with investors and people are like, I don't have any time to invest. I'm like, well, tell me about your week. What are you doing at night? When do you get off of work? When do you go into work? If you were working shifts, like if I was a waiter and working weekends and nights and stuff like that, and I had to get up early in the morning to get some stuff done, you probably aren't going to be, A, uh, if I know most <laughs> waiters, bartenders, like I did, we don't like to wake up before 10 because we're usually out late. So you're not going to have a lot of time to take it. But if you're working a full-time nine to five, yeah, you get plenty of set. You've got that time from 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. That you can, if you really focus, do away with the watching TV or the drinking with your buddies for a period of time or whatever it might be, you can carve out some time in your schedule to start dedicating to investing. We'll get through some of the things up there. Now, another big thing you got to look at is what strategies are working in your market or other markets. What strategies are really working in today's market? I've seen plenty of people out there, and I think we've all seen them. I won't say snake oil, so I've been selling a class or a technique that worked two years ago, but it hasn't worked or they haven't done anything in the last you know, 12 or 24 months because that system doesn't work in a specific market. It doesn't work be based on a price point, okay? Like if there's a guy in San Antonio who's bought a ton of homes and he uses credit card, but they were all 15 and $20,000 homes that he, he bought, you know, about a thousand plus over a few years back. Well, he's not buying a thousand homes, even a hundred homes or 10 homes a year now because he's living off what he did 10 years ago. So you got to keep that in mind what strategies are truly working in your market and other markets? And of course, what's working now? Yes, COVID has thrown a bit of a monkey wrench in a lot of systems out there. The, 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 the availability um, to be able to foreclose or evict, that hurt a lot of landlords. It hurt note investors. They're also suspending things of banks selling notes or other things. So keep that in mind with what's working in your market and the time. Maybe you're living in a very expensive market like San Francisco, where you've got to have a lot of capital buy in the neck of the woods. Maybe you need to look out of state. You know, Missouri, Kansas, or other states that have much uh, better opportunities for you than what's in your backyard. Education. This is a big thing that we we see people fall into kind of two schools of this. You either people like to go through the school of hard knocks where they try to get everything free and they struggle. Oh, I don't want to pay. I did it without a mentor. Well, yeah, it took you six years to do it. What if you could have done what you learned in six years? You could compress that to six months or six weeks. You know, I'm a big, I, I think people can live in both schools. Yes, you can learn online, you can learn videos, you can network. But at some point, if you're really serious about taking action and finding success, all your most successful people, whether it's in sports or professionals or CEOs, everybody who's professional has a coach or a mentor of some sort for them to bounce ideas and help them avoid those potholes or landmines in either niches or different fields of their life, Okay. And this is one thing is the people that I've learned from all head coaches or people that they went to and learned from that mentored them along the way. And we'll talk a bit more about it later on. I mean, we, we live in such a great educational society now with YouTube 
uh, podcasts, webinars, and so many books out there and different topics that you can get, no matter what niche you're focused on, hey, you can find information on it. Read it, learn it. But the most important thing you do is if you're going to be active, you've got to start taking action. I was talking to a guy this morning. He reached me. He's looking at this note in Michigan. And I'm like, okay, you got a copy of the note. Have you made an offer yet? No. I was like, well, we decided, we discussed what your offer is going to be last week. Why are you waiting a week to take action? Well, I want to make sure. Well, look, look, make an offer. Put your put your huevos out there. Put them on the chopping block. There's nothing you can't do to get out of that deal. You're not going to lose any money, but let's take some action. Quit trying to be perfect in everything. And if you're looking for the perfect deal and you're afraid to take action because something's not perfect, you're probably going to struggle uh, as, as a real estate investor. Now, there are some basic ducks, and I hate this term. So many people are like, well, I, I'm going to wait till I get my ducks in a row. Oh, I hate that. Quit. Pull out a gun. Let me pull out a gun and kill the ducks. Okay, let's make some souffles or make some, you know, <laughs> uh, not souffles. What's the what's the pâtés or what do they call it with the duck duck liver and stuff like? Anyway, look, there's some things that you have to put in place to get rocking, but they don't take difficult. These are things that should not limit you from learning and starting to take action. Okay, obviously you need a name, company name. Today's in the 21st century, you got to have a website and you've got to really have social media and you've got to have an email, uh, an email service provider or a CRM that you can start marketing out to. That's one of the most effective ways to market. I'm always amazed when I'm talking to investors and they don't have a website and they don't have an email account for something. And we're not talking Gmail or Yahoo or maybe some of you AOL, you know, where's that router? All right. Um. You know, the thing you got to keep in mind is we all, it's professional people these days, it's all about professionalism and you've got to start acting like that. Okay. You have to start acting like you're a professional. Yes. You can do some of this stuff. Oh yeah. I'm going to buy my own property money. That's fine. I don't want to be on social media. Well, that's fine, but you're limiting your success. And I don't know anybody that wants to try to learn, like if you were the if you were a race car, would you want to try to be a race a driver with no no wheels or no engine? There's things you have to do to be successful, and a lot of these things work together. Um, you've got to have you need an LLC, you need some sort of entity, and you need an LLC is really the best thing for real estate to not only protect yourself and your assets, but it's also protect you from uh, nefarious ne'er do wellers, as our buddy Aaron Young likes to say. An LLC, I know some states are more expensive than others, but you've got to have a limited liability company. Start protecting yourself and your deals. It's just a part of doing business. Don't be doing things as a doing business as don't want to be a sole proprietor. You're in the business of making and real estate. Real estate's a grown up. You got to pull your big girl panties or your big boy panties up and get you an LLC. Bite the bullets, the cost of doing business. If you need some help finding a name for your entity or finding if your so social media is available or URL for website, use namecheck.com. It's a free website to search to see what's available out there. And uh, it's, a, it's a thing that we use on a regular basis when we're creating a new LLC or new entity. Um, yeah, I think you've got one of the most important things that you can do is to start surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals. And I'm a big believer that if you, um, specifically if you're brand new, really brand new, really great, you got to join some real estate clubs, real estate investing clubs. There's so many of them out there, whether they're meeting in person or they're online, you're in one right now. Um, look in your local area, look in your backyard, go to meetup.com or go to reiclub.com and start looking for meetup groups in the area. This is one of the most important things. And if, especially if you're working part, working full-time in a J-O-B, this is one thing that can keep you motivated, keep you rocking. While all these real estate clubs only meet like once a month, well, look, at, put it, make it a, a weekly activity. Go to a lunch if you can, or go to an afternoon or an evening event. Some cities, you've got multiple ones meeting. You could go to a meetup group six times a week if you want to. I, I wouldn't go that far, but I would go to one a week at least. This way, you're still investing in your mental. I say mental, your mind, your mindset. You surround yourself with people. Everybody's going to have hiccups along the way, peaks and valleys. You're going to do some things and then you're going to fall off, you know, the wagon. Like, oh, I don't have time to get anything done this week. The, the going to a real estate club is always going to be a benefit. You're always going to feel better walking out of it. It's kind of like going to the gym. You got to work your real estate mindset and going to your local real estate clubs or meetup groups in your area are, is a great way to do it. And you've got to give it some time. 
people really don't won't interact with you and won't really start seeing a lot of success from it until you've gone at least six times to an event. So if you're waiting to go once a month, that's six months from now. I would rather go to six in events and start start seeing some value in it going from there. Now, here's the thing. There's so many different things. The biggest mistake you'll make as a real estate investor is picking 30 million niches, okay? You can't be a jack of all trades. Start researching one facet. Maybe it's wholesaling to start off with or putting options down or light rehabs or note investing. Whatever it might be, don't pick more than two, okay? Pick one, learn that, kind of master it, and then maybe add a second one, okay? But the most part, the worst mistake you can make is trying to learn 20 different techniques and go to 20 different classes on it. And you're going to be more confused and spend all this money on classes and never pull the trigger and take any action. So just focus on one, maybe two things the most. That's really the most that you can do. All right. That's because you don't have time. You've heard of the Parento principle where 80% of success comes from 20% of activity. Well, if you take and remove the 80% distraction where you're instead of it's 20% activity, it's 100% activity on one thing, you're going to have four times the amount of success. Okay. Now, once you've picked a niche, yes, then start, it definitely makes sense to start connecting with other investors in your niche. If you're a note investor, connect with other note investors. If you're a fixed flipper, connect. If you're a rent, you're a landlord or wholesaler, start connecting with other successful investors in your niche. Talk to your local real estate club presidents and people say, hey, who's good? At wholesaling, who's good at options, who's good at notes in, in our you know, our group or whatever it might be, start connecting. If there's not a lot of people locally there, ask why are there a lot of people? It's hard to do that niche here in this market. Okay. Start the networking weekly, whether it's going locally or virtually or meeting for lunch or coffee or something. Networking is very, very key, whether you're passive or active. It's it's such one of the smart things. You can do to keep it out there. Now, I'm a big believer that we as investors, we all kind of, uh, uh, there's an evolution to real estate investors. And if you'd like a copy of this image, I'd be glad to send it to you. But I'm a big believer that we all start out as a student, kind of like the chimpanzee, <laughs> free man, cro magna man. And as we start learning, wholesaling really becomes the most attractive thing. Wholesaling is being able to put people, you know, properties in a contract without using your money. That's a lot of people get into like trying to wholesale. Okay. Well, you start wholesaling, you start making a little bit of money. Then you maybe get into some taking some deals down. You get more comfortable with marketing, and raising capital, um, and, and finding deals that make sense that you can take down with hard money or other people's money. Then a lot of people get into for quick flips. They want to keep that cash flow. They want to get they get tired of doing just making quick cash flow with wholesaling and, and not having anything coming monthly. So they they turn into the landlord side of things. And then what happens with landlording at the landlord, then they're like, okay, I'm tired. I want to be the bank. I'm tired of doing toilet tents and trash ads. I'm tired of dealing with the drama people. Let me get into the note investing side or they get in the lending side aspect of it. So that's kind of the evolution of real estate investors that we see across the board. There's a few steps in between there, but that kind of gives you the general prognosis. It's, it's good to be the bank. People want to be the bank. They want to be the lender of some sort, whether it's note investor or private lending. That's ultimately kind of the aspect of where things go. Now, you need a team. You got to have a team to help you out. And I, I found this photo that I was looking through. This is literally a photo of me attending my first real estate investor expo. Going back to, it was like, uh, it was the week after the 4th of July in 2004. And I can look back at this is a 17, golly, over 17 years ago. There's a little bit more gray in my head, but maybe a little, my face might be a little bit wider. My hair is definitely not that brownish color. But you need a team. You're not going to do things all yourself. Now, most people starting off with, they're like, what do I do? Who do I turn to? Well, the best thing is just start talking to people. But we've kind of outlined the team that you need, whether it's locally or nationally for you. And it, really, one of the most important things is, is if you're getting into traditional real estate, stuff like that, you need to have a, basically an investor-friendly title company. Somebody that's used to working with creative deals, whether it's subject to deals or wholesale and whatever it might be, an investor-friendly title company. Is one of the great because they're kind of the hub that keeps it all together. If you think of a wheel, like a bicycle, when all the spokes are all the different things that are happening, vendors, title, stuff like that, that center focus, that uh, sprocket in the middle is really like the title company. They got your buyers, sellers, reps all coming together in one spot. It's also good. You want to make friends and identify proper local hard money lenders. We'll talk about that in a second. But hard, even if you're using your own funds or not buying real estate, it's still good to talk to the local hard money lenders and start seeing what they're offering, their terms, 
where they looking to fund percentage, that kind of stuff. Because they really know the market and they can help you, especially if you're buying a property that needs repairs of any sort, they can really help you kind of identify what's going on. Uh, you got to have a realtor. I, I, I hate to say this, ladies and gentlemen, the people up there that tell you you can do real estate without a realtor, they're correct, but it's a whole lot more work. And you need to find a realtor that can help you and have somebody, you're not, I'm going to tell you right now, you can't, there's not a realtor out there that's good, both residential and commercial. That, that if, if a realtor tells you, oh, I'm good at residential and commercial, that means they're, they're half-ass at both. Okay. There's just too much stuff going on. You need a good residential realtor. And then a commercial uh, realtor is going to be specializing in specific asset classes and other things. Okay. It's a whole different ball game. All right. So don't try to, oh, my friend says they're good. Well, they say they're good, but that doesn't mean they're good. You know, you need an investor friendly. Start off the residential side and grow into the commercial side. Ah, it, you know, a title company is great, but you also, it's good to have a local real estate attorney to run things by, to do closings, maybe the outside the box closings that your, your title company will do to set up escrow accounts, incoming, outcoming wires, reviewing you, heck, heck protecting you, coming to your defense. If you've got, you're getting sued, you're going to get sued at some point, but a local real estate attorney is there worth their weight in gold because they can often think outside the box and help you make things happen. Um, I think it's important to have a local self-directed IRA company or reps. You know, you may not have a, a company like Quest in your backyard or Equity Trust or something like that, but many companies have satellite offices, in major areas. Go out and find who's big, who's in the, who's in the big city you're in. Now, if you're in a small area, I get it. Go to your local, find out who's got an office in the nearest size company because those can come in handy. You heard Catherine mention she's got seven or eight people in the process of transferring funds from their 401ks or uh, business accounts, you know, business IRA accounts into self-directed IRA so that she can use that money to invest with to go buy deals. And so it's good. One of our strongest points is having several self-directed IRA company reps that we work with. If one's not going to return a phone call, we go to another one and go from there. So keep an eye. It's also a great way to get education if there is a local office, because many of them will host meetups or webinars that you can connect with the network with other people at as well. Now, lead source, I say this in a couple different ways, okay? You gotta have a lead source. Now, depending on what type of deal you're focused on, if you're uh, focused on wholesaling or distressed assets, you gotta have a lead source. And maybe if you're like, um, let's say you're chasing foreclosures or something like that. Well, you gotta have a list company that provides that information. So some of us will be national, some of us will be local. Like here in Texas, we're pretty blessed because we have the Roddy list. It's, you know, the foreclosure listing service that goes for closure.info. We've had them on one of our podcasts before and one of our Note Night in America things. But that's a company that I've used for years. When I need a foreclosure list in any county in Texas, that's the right I go with. If I needed help with tax deeds, I would contact Arnie Aberson because his team is pulling that kind of stuff as well. If it's also good to connect with as many wholesalers in an area that have a list or good wholesalers because they'll have real good deals that can help you out with it. So it's a great way to find deals. Okay. Private money lenders. This is something that's going to take some, some time, but this is why going to your local RIA is going to be valuable. It's also why talking to your real estate attorney or also talking to an investor-friendly title company is the key because I've had many title company agents and closing agents literally will refer me to potential private money lenders. Hey, here you go. Talk to this person. They're closing a lot of deals. They're lending a lot of capital of their own funds. Talk to them, especially if you're brand new. If you get a referral from a title company, many people are willing to work with new people as long as the deal makes sense and you're using the same type of vendors or the same vendors that they're using. Uh, you got to worry about taxes. A bookkeeper and accountant will help you out with that, especially for write-offs at the end of the year and keeping track of your expenses and, and separating those things. Um, if you're really serious about going full-time eventually as a, uh, as a real estate investor, if you want to make six figures, you need to hire an assistant or a virtual assistant of some sort to help do the things you can't get done during the day. And if you want to go from whatever, if you're making 50 grand, if you want to go make it 100 grand, go hire somebody, go hire a VA or assistant part-time, get the ball rolling is a great way to help you out with that. And there's plenty of them out there, but we love Reva Global. They do a great job in our delegation of stuff work. And then of course, if you're in the rehab space or fix and flip space, you need to have obviously rehab crew or general contracts. Somebody that you trust who's going to watch out for, who's not just out for them. This is a hard thing to have, but this is why you want to find investor-friendly realtors or title companies or hard money lenders, they can often help you um, with bookkeepers, private money lenders, and also rehab for general contractors out there. So you got to have a team. You're not going to go do it all yourself. Biggest mistake I made was trying to rehab a property all myself. I'll never do it again. Okay. And you know, 
those you, you can go meet with those people. It doesn't cost you anything. But when it gets into marketing for deals, there's going to be some costs. There's going to be some upfront costs when it comes to marketing. It's, and it's going to either come down to time or money or a bit of both. Okay. Now, if you're going to use like, uh, if you're going to be marketing using like postcards or letters or door hangers, that's going to cost you what? Well, it's going to cost you time and money. Time for you to put the stuff together, go hanging out, or it's going to cost you money, obviously to print them, but also money to get them out, whether you're mailing them or leave them in a neighborhood, it's time and money. And that's really going to be the most expensive aspect if you're going in traditional real estate investing, okay? Now, if you want to go driving for dollars, a lot of people like this. Oh, it doesn't cost anything to drive around looking for ugly properties, okay? Or I'm going to go knock on foreclosure list and look at that. Be careful about that. You don't want to get shot at, all right? I've been shot at a couple of times. That's okay. Driving for dollars is great. That's how I got started. Found my first option deal on the property you see below. Uh, just takes time. And this can be a great thing to really kind of get your spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, significant other, partner, whatever it might be, interested driving around looking at ugly properties. Our friend Stacy Rossetti, which we had on here, she loves driving for dollars for ugly self-storage facilities and finds some stuff, okay? Email marketing, are you buying a list? We do, what we do a lot with contacting banks for notes, we do a lot of email marketing out to asset managers at banks and stuff like that as well, along, uh, along with also contacting other note investors. Dialing for dollars, picking up the phone, are you calling distressed leads? You know, realtors, we all know realtors call expired listings or FISBOs. You know, some people are doing that. People are calling off the foreclosure list. There's a, that's obviously a lot of time. Social media marketing, that could be time and money. I mean, you can use the free resources of posting. You can use paid ads, you know, uh, and depending on what channel you're on and what you're looking at, that can cost you a bit of both. You know, trade shows and conferences, I think is one of the most effective ways. It's also going to be one of the most expensive ways. If you want to be a sponsor or have a booth, there's a lot of REA clubs that will offer you to be a booth or a vendor, you know, once a month, or there may be a uh, an expo or something coming. Like I were going up to in a big event in uh, Atlantic City here in a couple of weeks. That's free ticket for me to go. If I was going to be a booth sponsor, it cost me like two thousand bucks. But I'm just going to hang out there for you. And then networking. Networking takes time. Doesn't take a lot of money, but it just takes time. Of building one of those relationships, building the rapport, of showing it up on a regular basis, at whether it's at your local REA your local mastermind groups, whatever it might be, of just networking and just being present. And, and I like to give first. I can connect somebody or help somebody add value to somebody's business. That's the first thing. It's often an easier ask when you need something later on if you've been able to help somebody out in the past or something like that. So you got to look at what type of deal you're doing, what type of focus, what's your niche, and what does that entail when it comes to marketing costs and marketing time? Do I have to have 20 hours a week to sit at home to go do this stuff? Or can I do some of this part-time or automate some of the stuff so it works? You know, does it have to be during nine to five I'm doing this or can this can be after hours? Okay. Now you got to have patience. All right. Got to have patience too as well. You got to give stuff time. You go. Each niche is different. Know your number. Know your key performance indicators. Um, you know, for those that are doing like foreclosures, you're going to be mailing out a ton of postcards. You got to realize you're only like a one to 4% response rate. With that, how many foreclosures are in your market? You know, uh, Arnie Emerson said something really good in, in like the bigger counties across Texas here. You may only have a couple tax deeds or tax things going on. And you got a lot of people bidding on this. We got to know what's going on in other counties. You might find better deals. Master, as I've said this before, master one niche before adding a second one. Give your niche that you're focused on the time for it to germinate, for your marketing to work. Don't just send out one email blast. Oh, it doesn't work. Or 150 letters. Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, 10 phone calls to banks. It doesn't work. Well, it didn't work for you because you didn't give it time for those seeds to sprout. You're planting seeds. You're literally planting, trying to plant a forest. you got to give it time for it to grow. And this is why it's important to talk with other investors and other people out there who are actually doing that type of niche. You're focused. Hey, what's working? What's not working? Most successful people, most people that are successful investors, they're glad to share resources or what's working in their market, what's not working. Uh, it's one of the best things that we love about it. Because they give it time to work, be realistic. People aren't going to fall over to give you their property or their real estate deal. It's going to just take a little bit of time. I think it's great to find an accounting partner, somebody to help you bounce ideas or even share in the workload to help you make things happen. Now, you don't need a partner. Okay, this is not what I'm talking about. You don't need a partner. You don't need to go up with somebody and you're splitting everything. The biggest mistake I made was I have to say this, but I actually trying to believe that I couldn't do all my stuff that I needed a partner. Well, 
my real estate first real estate partner, he was great, but he didn't show up. Okay. Great guy, but he didn't show up. He didn't put the same type of work into what we were doing on the real estate side. He didn't have the same work ethic. He had different priorities. And that's not a big, I've had people come to my, come in for one-on-one. It's like a partner of three and that's never going to work. And one person was upset because the other two weren't pulling their weight, but the other two didn't know what the third, the other one wanted. So honestly, you don't need a partner. And we're not talking about your spouse or your girlfriend or boyfriend or significant other, whatever it might be, life partner, whatever. That's different. We're talking about somebody else outside of your bedroom in your house. Okay. <laughs> you don't need a partner up. You need to find somebody or just look at the guy or gal looking in, you know, back at you in the mirror and be accountable to them. But accountability partner is somebody you can like be competitive with. That's a difference. Somebody who's maybe going in the same direction. That's a thing to split and share, but you don't need a physical business partner separately. Okay. Uh, I think it's great too. If you've seen deals, run them by other investors, run them by your rent, run them by your hard money lenders. If they would buy the or fund the deal, that's a great thing. You're on the right track. This looks good. Keep going through your due diligence. Well, we would fund this all day long or we'll buy it. If they won't buy it or won't fund, there's something wrong with it. Okay. One of the things that we would do when we did our fix and flips or if we we're getting ready to foreclose, we would get the local hard money lender to come out and pre-qualify the property for, okay, well, how much work does it need? How much will you fund? Okay, this property is pre-qualified for this amount of work and this loan amount. So it makes it a whole lot easier. And if they wouldn't fund the property when we were looking at it, 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 it was because of either what location it was in or it was too much gang or overpriced, we were paying too much for it. That was a clear sign that we were overpaying for the property and we would do with it. And it saved us a lot of money and not taking down property that others wouldn't finance or, or you know purchase. So that's a big, big thing. Networking, running deals by the people. I mean, I get people call, hey, can you check my numbers? And I'm glad to do that. I'm always, I'm always checking numbers for people. Um, it's one of my things I enjoy doing because I want to hear and see if you're doing things, provided it's something that it's a niche than that now. Okay. Now you got to avoid these traps, negative Nancy's. Now I found this photo of me. Well, this is going, this goes back to uh, late 2007. This is 14 year old. Four, uh, no. Yeah, 2007. I've been investing for a couple of years as a full-time investor at this point. I've gotten out of the mortgage industry, which is investing against my ex-wife. And unfortunately, she was a negative Nancy. Okay. Just didn't believe in things. When we would put my when I put my goals up, what I wanted to accomplish, or our goal up as a, a, a family and what we wanted to focus on, when anybody came over, she would throw that in the drawer and hide it from the in-laws, from her mom, anybody else. You don't want that. You want to find somebody. Who's going to support you? And unfortunately, sometimes our negative Nancy's are the people that are the closest to us. And I thank God that I did get divorced back in 2008, July 20th, 2008. It was my divorce. It was one of the happiest days of my life looking back because now I could go a lot faster without having to take one step forward and one step back to try to make that other person like, come on, let's get your shit in gear, pull your head out of your ass. Let's go. We can do this. No, we're not going to fail. Oh, quit worrying about the what if. Let's let's think about the what ifs of good things. Okay. Another thing you got to avoid are time vampires. And I say, don't be an asshole. There are people who will suck you for energy or questions out there religiously. And you'll see these people at meeting groups are constantly asking stupid off the wall questions. They're asking the same question over and over again. And they're never pulling the trigger. I hate assholes. Okay. None of you are. Okay. I hate time vampires. Look, if you're going to pull the trigger and get rocky, if you're asking the question, great, do it. But if I'm telling you the same answer three different ways, it's the same answer. Don't be an asshole. Don't do that to yourself. If people are taking time to give you knowledge and answer your questions, take it. They're here to help. They're not here to try to help you fail. They want you to find success. People want you to be successful. So avoid the time vampires. They're just going to suck you of your time and your energy. Okay. Uh, I've said this before. Don't become a jack of all trades. A jack of all trades is a master of none. Focus on one niche. Get it down. Get it rock and rolling. Get your systems in place. Get it rock and rolling. If you're being successful at it, then add something else on the side. Okay. Uh, avoid. This is another trap. If a, 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 I say non-traditional closings. When you start hearing people talk about, oh, just give me five grand cash, wire it to my account, and the deal's yours. You need to put some brakes on the things. I've seen way too many new investors get screwed out of little bits of money or big chunks of money because they didn't understand the closing side of the deal. And somebody screwed them up. There are unethical people out there 
<laughs> there are people up there that are unethical that will just take you for your money and move on there from it. Uh, Lanny says, Jamie is stealing ass calls. Feel free, steal away. I know that she's dealt with plenty of them in the mortgage industry and stuff like that, Lanny. So yeah, glad, glad to use that. Figured you might get a chuckle out of that. But look, in the note business, we have non-traditional closings. We're not meeting in a title company. We're doing a wire transfer and there's assignments. That's a, that's a different story. I, I talked to somebody the other day that lost 20 grand because they thought they were buying a property. They wired 20 grand to this guy's account, supposed to be the down payment when it should have gone to a title company and the guy just took the 20 grand and took off. You know, there's a renter in place, but it wasn't the right renter. So they thought they were moving to a property and then when it showed up to, to go move in, there's somebody already living in the property. Not a good thing, okay? Always trust, but verify. Verify title, ver verify ownership, the value of the property. Understand the true due diligence what it takes for you to close the types of deals you're doing. Yes, if somebody's giving you due diligence, docs and values, that's great. Trust it, but also go out and verify in your own. It's one of the things that will save you time, especially in values and ownership. There's some things sometimes that you need to clear up with title. Uh, avoid these traps. So you, you are not the know-it-all. And one of the mistakes I made earlier on, this is prior to 2004, was thinking I knew everything. I just broke that. Is thought I wasn't coachable. I thought, oh, so my dad owns a local hardware store. I fixed and flipped properties. I've done anything in a house that you think of from laying foundation all the way up to putting in a roof and fixing everything. I thought I was a Tim Allen of fixing and flipping when I started off at young, when I got out of college. And that was not, I was not very coachable. And I learned from the school of hard knocks what not to do. Almost I had to file bankruptcy back in 2001 because I screwed up. You got to learn, you got to be coachable. And your coaching is going to vary as you get older. You always going to be looking for somebody who's a little bit more advanced and more advanced and more advanced when you get rock and roll. So keep that in mind. Be coachable. The people out there that are trying to help you, they're there to help you, not hurt you. Okay? Another thing you got to watch out is too good to be true deals. If it just sounds too too good to be true, there's always, uh, uh, there's always downsides to every type of investing. You got to know, hey, how can these deals go wrong? All right. And if somebody says guaranteed and safe, that's run. OK, there's no such thing as a guarantee in real estate investing. There's nothing. The, things happen all the time. Who would have imagined COVID screwing up the market for you know the last 18 months? OK. And the most important thing you do too, not putting money away. You've always got to put money away for a rainy day. Start saving. Put it in an IRA. Start putting 10 percent of the profits you make or sales you make somewhere for the rainy day or for the deals that you want to take down yourself, start saving a little bit each day. You've heard probably about the book, The Richest Man in Babylon. Well, start, read that and start tithing to the church of higher returns, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit can go a long way. Learn to live uh, on other things. Like we were, uh, we, we uh, interviewed a guy by the name of Ryan Broyles a few years back on the podcast. And he was a wide receiver out of Oklahoma. I, I didn't hold that against him, but he was a, he held the record holder for the most amount of receptions. In college, in the NCAA, he ended up playing for the the Lions for a couple of years. The Detroit Lions signed a big, million, uh, you know, multi million dollar contract. And him, his wife, college sweetheart, they had two kids. They had lived on sixty thousand dollars a year. They that's how they budgeted everything that they made in his professional salary above sixty thousand. They went into savings. Now they've bought a lot of real estate around that. They actually done a lot of great things. But that's the smart thing to do. They're living on 10% and saving 80%. Now, I know you can't all do that. We've all got expenses or things to do it. But start putting things away. Don't wait till next year to start saving. Start putting 100, 20, 50 bucks, whatever it might be a week. I'm going to start putting a little bit away because it'll come in handy. Because there's going to be deals when you need to tap in your own funds to make things happen. It happens. It is what it is. You just got to be prepared for that. Now, there are some things that I think you can learn as much as you can about this. You can learn and learn, keep learning. It's important to learn, but you got to be pulling the trigger. But these are the things that I think are the biggest bang for the buck. The more you learn about these things, the more educated you're going to be, the more mistakes you're going to avoid, and the more profits you're going to make. And I'm talking about asset protection. Protect what you've built or you're looking to build. Um, our buddy Aaron Young, Laughlin Associates, you've, we've had him on here. Or we had Brent Brusque from Laughlin Associates on here a couple of weeks ago. Is uh, the Magnify Your Wealth. Uh, event that we attend once or twice a year or their uh, secrets classes that they put on. Learn as much as you can about asset protection because it is one of the most important things to protect yourself, protect what you've built. Okay. 
uh, building credit, figuring out how it works for business or personal credit. That's a very important thing. They help you get cheap money using bank funds. I mean, that's the cheapest money out there. Yes, you can go use other people's money or um, use your own, but it's better to use somebody else's money. And with rates and interest rates being like they are right now, very, very cheap. Hey, it's a great way to uh, do some big things. Uh, learn as much as you can about raising private capital and lending and, and using other people's money. That's what OPM stands for, using other people's. Learn as much as you can about self-directed IRAs or self-directed accounts or you know what, it's, what you can and cannot do about starting a fund at some point. Learn as much as you can because it will come in handy as you grow and as you structure things properly. These three things are three of the most important things out there. Learn as much as you can about taxes. Uh, one of the most valuable contacts I will tell you right now is a buddy of ours, Ron Fossum. Fossum Fossum, I always pronounce it properly, but the guy's a genius when it comes to taxes and write-offs and, and deductions and making sure they are structured properly out there. And we met him through Aaron Young uh, at Laughlin Associates. That's one of the most important things you do out there. Uh, you also, too, we talked about this earlier, you got to learn to delegate. If you are doing $15 an hour jobs, you're going to have a $15 an hour bank account. Figure out what your pay grade is, what you need, to, what you're worth per hour, and then delegate anything below that to somebody else. Yes, they may not do as very a good a job as you will, but initially, if they're doing 60, 70% as good as you would initially, you've cloned yourself. You've just added 60% or 70% bonus to you because now two people are working versus one person. And you're doing the most, the most um, valuable thing. You're doing the most profitable thing at any given moment. And that's what you have to work. Work above your pay grade. How do you do that? You delegate the stuff that you don't want to do that's below your knowledge level or something that easily can be done. Okay, and this may come down to your day and day activities. Like when I was younger, I loved mowing our yard. We had the yard of the month growing, you know, when I was, uh, when I bought our first time from 2001 to 2004. And then I was like, screw this. This is taking too much time on my weekends. Now, I, don't get me wrong, I like mess with my backyard now. It's fun, but it doesn't take a lot of time for me. It's a, it's a hobby aspect of things. Whereas oh, it would take me two, three hours while well, it was made more sense for me to pay the kid down the street 25 to 50 bucks to go mow the yard and I could do something for that three hours that was valuable. Then also, here's the thing. What's the next level? And I mean that as we talked about the evolution, we go back to the slide where it's from the chimpanzee or the, you know, cro magna ape to where we are evolving to. Investors, we grow. We evolve. Will I be a note investor all my life? Probably so. I don't know. But am I going and doing the fix and flips? Am I doing the light rehabs? No, I'm not really doing it. I don't want to do that. But we all evolve. I When I started off, I was wholesaling doing options because I didn't have any money. I was working on 72 deals. But I've evolved all over time. So if you can find a mentor, find somebody in your local market, somebody who's been around the block a couple of times or two, been to the show and seen it, had the popcorn, smelt the, uh, the elephant shit and gone from there. Talk with him. One of my most valuable mentors early on was a guy named uh, Aubrey Johnson. He's a private investor, but he was an 80-year-old private investor here in Towson, Texas. And every time I went and met with him, talking about a deal, talking about real estate, it was always, always valuable. And he gave me some of the best insight into my into future. He said, hey, we're all going to evolve. Look and learn what comes next. What's the next step for you? And then also, whoever's mentoring, who mentored them? Why did they get mentored? Who was the person that mentored your mentor or coach? Where did they learn their information from? Who did they learn from? What was so valuable about them compared to others? That's one of the most big, hey, who taught you? Who taught you to be where you're at? And we've had some great mentors along the way. Um, there are some things that we, you know, and I'll get to that in a second, but there are some things that you have got to do if you're brand new. If you ha haven't done these things, do this before 2022. You've got roughly six, seven weeks left in the year really about six weeks of work, truly, before things are shutting down for Thanksgiving week and Christmas and New Year's. There are a few things that we all can do out there. If you haven't done that, I'm a big proponent. Take the Fundability Boot Camp next Friday, Saturday. It, look, it was one of the most valuable informations. I'm not paid to promote it. I just think it's one of the most three valuable things that you can attend as a new investor or even as a seasoned investor to make it happen. Like I said, if you don't like it, cancel it and get your money back and move on. But for those that go through it, if you go to getfundablebootcamp.com, trust me, it'll be very, very valuable to you. All right. Um, I also think if you're new to real estate investing, you've got to understand why an LLC is so valuable 
and I would take the secrets of using an LLC class that Laughlin and Associates offers. If you go to secretsclass.com and use the code SAVE2021, lowercase SAVE, SAVE2021, it actually drops the price from $97 down to $21.21. That's a discount that Brent and Aaron are doing just for our students, our, our network. So go to secretsclass.com. It's, uh, I don't know, six or seven hours of videos, stuff like that. It is so worth it, especially if you're brand new to learn what to do, what not to do. If you haven't started an LLC, you don't have an entity, get one while you're there at Laughlin. I know depending on what state you're in, it may be anywhere from 30 bucks like it is in Mississippi all the way to 800 in California. Texas is like 300. It's worth it. Get it. If you don't have an LLC, you are playing Russian roulette with your future. Okay. Um, start a self-directed IRA. If you don't have an IRA Roth or traditional, start one now. We missed a big bullet with them, with the Biden administration looking to do away with some things in the IRA aspect, especially higher balance IRAs. Now, like I get it. Oh, I don't make 400 grand a year. Well, they've kicked those things out, but start a self-directed IRA. hundred bucks, put it in there. Start putting a little bit, you can contribute up to $6,000 a year. Start putting it in there because there's some great things that happen when you've had an IRA for at least five years. It's just a beautiful thing. Heck, you could do an option fee for a hundred bucks and Start off there and make it completely tax-free or tax-deferred growth. So start a self-directed IRA today. Get it started now, okay? And also, if you're brand new, um, there's so many books out there, but one of the most viable ones that when I think back to when I started off as a real estate investor, one that really helped me the most, it's literally Ron LeGrand. And his book that came out, How to Be a Quick-Turn Real Estate Millionaire, he talked about options and wholesaling. I think it's one of the best books when it comes to that. Now, Ron charges five grand for like a four-day virtual or in-person workshop. I wouldn't go spend that. I think you can get a lot of the information he teaches online at a much more affordable price or discount stuff. But that book, go buy it. You probably probably at a half price books or ordered online or Amazon. It's like 10 bucks, I think I saw. But it's honestly one of the most, most important books. Now, if you got five grand, you want to go to a four day, then do it. I'm not paid. I think Ron's got some of the best basic information for you if you're in the traditional real estate space. Doesn't do a lot with notes. I would not, I would not do... Try, uh, take his commercial boot camp. Um, he's great at residential. He is not good at commercial. Uh, his background, he just, yeah, he's good at residential, not at commercial, but read that. And then look, join your local RIAs. It may cost you 15 or 50 or 150 bucks, but join your local RIAs, at least two if you can. Make it a night to learn. Make it a, a regular appointment with your future self and the investor that you want to be by going to your local reels and do it. Look, I love having you here. Wednesday night's great. I love doing this. We have our Monday night thing as much kind of things, but there's other things out there. If you're very local centric, you've got a lot of deals in your backyard. Hey, go meet with local people. I give you permission to. All right. Um, like when you're there, just talk to people. I've spoken at hundreds of RIA clubs and meetup groups over the country in the last 14 years. The ones that are most successful are the ones that know. They're the ones talking. They're the ones getting up and not being a wallflower. They're the ones that are, I know it may be a little intimidating, especially if you're an introvert, but get up, go talk to people. You will you will find a lot of value in that. And that's one of the best things you can do. And I look back, I found this photo the first weekend at a real estate expo, it was at a Ron LeGrand Expo. This is in the Marriott, in the LAX Marriott. And if I could go back and share with that guy there on the left, the knowledge I've learned over the last 14, 15, 16, 20 years as a real estate investor, there's, you know, I tell them to make some changes, do some things differently. Um, I think I would tell them to buy a lot more in 2008, 9, and 10, but, you know, we've had a lot of mentors. I got to thank my buddy Boyd Pops over here that actually got me into this by starting this mortgage company back in 2004, where we were aligned with a couple of my mentors, Ann Cox was doing a lot of stuff with Ron LeGrand. And so we were traveling the country every two weeks to the real estate expo. And I'm just learning from experts and gurus and people taking opportunities and then sharing that. So that's one of the biggest things is that I was not afraid to say goodbye to my, uh, my good job. I guess you could say good job, but I was making good money at JP Morgan Chase as a banker. It, it was one of the best, uh, best decisions I ever made was to decide to leave banking. And it was the last actual corporate job I ever had was back in, July 4th, 2004 was my final day at Chase. But I've had some great mentors. I've learned a lot from Bob Leonetti and Jamie Kayla. They taught me the note business. I worked with them along with Boyd. They taught me creative financing, owner financing, some stuff to look at in commercial. Uh, Bob taught me marketing, taught me sales, taught me, taught me speaking. Jamie's a phenomenal speaker. Both of them are amazing. 
Of course, I spent a lot of time with Ron Legrand. The smell of shit and smell of shit and piss, the smell of money, is like he likes to say. And uh, he's been, it was a mentor of mine for years from going to all these uh, attending the events for literally almost four years of traveling every other weekend to an event and, and being there. I gotta give Roland Frazier, Roland and uh, met Bob at an event and Roland's now one of the co-owners of digitalmarketer.com. Uh, he's been a mentor of mine for since 2006 on marketing and learning how to uh, market and, and social media and how to get the word out what you're doing. You may recognize this guy, you may not, it's Jimmy Napier. One of the original note investors out there learned a lot from his book and his teachings as well. Phenomenal guy. Quincy Long from Quest IRA. Uh, him and his brother Nathan learned a lot from them about self-directed IRAs and being effective and, and using that to invest for ourselves, but also raising capital and using other people's money to make things happen. Uh, my buddy George, uh, George Anton. He's the uh, author of uh, The Banker's Code and some other things. Uh, I learned a lot from him, but I, I'm glad to count. I mean, all these people I have in my Rolodex, I can pick up the phone call right now, which is really nice. But George, I've learned so much from him and how he thinks probably one of the most, him and Roland Frazier are probably the two most intellectually gifted, smart people I know out there. A lot smarter than me. Greg Reed, he's been a mentor of mine for years, co-author of Think and Grow Rich, Three Feet from Gold, and a bunch of other things. He's also the host of Secret Knock. Uh, Greg is somebody I still talk to, not on a regular basis, a couple times a year, but when we do, it's always a good time of catching up. And uh, he's been very instrumental in, in success and me changing my mindset in some cases and, and overcoming some obstacles. I got to give my buddy Aaron Young because without Greg, I would have never met Aaron Young in San Diego at a secret knock years ago. And Aaron's become one of my best friends out there and one of the uh, closest confidants when it comes to legal business and also life. Just an absolute great guy. Sharon Lecter, I met at secret knock as well through Greg. Sharon, obviously for many of us, is you know co-author of Rich Dad Poor Dad, a very influential book for most investors out there. And I'm uh, fortunate enough that I have her on a Rolodex or my phone that I can call and talk to her. And she's been able to advise me on some things out there. And I've also been able to help her out with some things too, too. Of course, you've got Mark Victor Hansen, thinking uh, uh, chicken soup for the soul, him and his wife, Crystal, um, mentor early on in my life, I've announced, and now I get to call him a friend. I've been able to chance to spend some time with him and get to know him and help him out as well. And then, of course, Meryl Chandler, Meryl's helped me identify some amazing opportunities and also helped us with our, our business and personal credit out there. I could go on and on. There's a lot of people out there that have helped influence me along the way. It's the same thing for you as real estate investors. You're brand new. There's going to be people that help impact you along the way. Most of it should be for good. All right. There's a lot of the people on here that I've met along the way that have helped me in some sort of fashion. People that are on this call even tonight. People that I haven't heard talk to. Okay. Um, Kelly Alexander, Jim, I, you know, I should mention her a little bit. I haven't spent much time with her. I haven't had a chance to, but Kelly's phenomenal at some of the things out there. Ron Fossum, you know, we talked about that. Jamie Harrington, Lanny Harrington out there. I have to tell you guys out there. Catherine Bell, you guys out there. Uh, you know, I've been, been very blessed. Yeah, you know, I've made mistakes. I am far from perfect. But one of the most things I can tell you is I've always learned from my mistakes and what people, my mentors taught me along the way. And anytime I did make a mistake, it was because I went against something or didn't take the time to listen to what my mentors had to tell me. So I encourage you guys, if you're looking to get into the real estate space, you've got friends or families or people out there looking to tap into it or do some things with you. Hey, start that process now. Get rock and roll. Start learning. Start uh, sharing resources and take action. You know, that's the most important thing I can tell each and every one of you um, is go take action learn from others' mistakes, and start implementing things. Having a resolution or goals and dreams are great, but it's nothing unless you take action. So go take some action. Start learning. And I'm going to leave you with one final thought tonight before we let you guys go, is that real estate investing is not a sprint. It is a marathon of peaks and valleys, wins and losses, and a constant learning curve. So go out there. You bruise your knees, scrape up your knuckles and get rock and roll. And trust me, you will feel better from taking the action. And if you screw up or fail on a deal or something like that, or it doesn't happen, you're going to learn more from at least taking action and failing than you ever would from sitting on the sidelines and not doing anything. As I always like to say, the only thing that you guarantee by not taking action is failure. So don't be a failure, take action. And we'll see you all at the top, everybody. Have a great evening and we'll see you next Wednesday night.